A big thanks to photosavings.com for supplying us with the Focusrite Scarlet Solo Studio Package used in this home recording mini series. They have everything from photography and video equipment to musical instruments, pro audio, and more. Use the discount code MUSICTECHHELPGUY for 10% off your next order. Hey everyone, this is Josh Carney from Carney Media Group and the Music Tech Help Guy YouTube channel. If you're new to the world of recording with DAWs, and you wanna start making your own music and recording your own music from home, this mini series is perfect for you. We'll cover setting up audio interfaces, microphones and basic miking techniques. We'll also talk about different tracking techniques and recording techniques, as well as some mixing techniques. So welcome to my absolute beginner's guide to home recording. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the basic equipment you need to get started. First and foremost, you need a computer, either a Mac or a PC. I prefer Macs for audio and music production because they seem to have less problems when it comes to connecting to external audio peripherals like audio interfaces and MIDI controllers. Next up, you need to choose a DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. This is the app in your computer that's going to store all of your audio recordings and this is where you're gonna be doing all of your audio editing and mixing. Now, I prefer Logic Pro for a few reasons. One, it's the cheapest DAW out there. It's $200, it's a one-time payment. There aren't multiple tiers like Pro Tools. I just upgraded to Pro Tools Ultimate the other day. It's $1,000 a year just to have Pro Tools. $200 for Logic. Second, I feel like Logic's learning curve is the easiest of any DAW. And third, all of the licensing is handled right inside the computer. There's no third-party dongles that you have to plug in to load your licensing like with Cubase and Pro Tools. The only drawback to Logic is that it's Mac only. You have to have a Mac in order to run Logic. Now, if you're running a PC, I would recommend Persona Studio One. Now their full version is $500 and it's totally worth it, but there's also an artist version that's only $99. So I'd recommend go checking out uh, Persona Studio One. And if you really wanna bite the bullet, you can go check out Pro Tools if you're a PC user. My friends at photosavings.com sent over this Focusrite Scarlet Solo Studio package for us to check out. It basically has everything you need to get started, except for the computer, of course. It even comes with two DAWs. It comes with Ableton Live Lite and Pro Tools First. So those are just two stripped down versions of those DAWs. So let's check out what's inside. The audio interface is a hardware device that's gonna allow you to input and output audio signals. This is a Focusrite Scarlet Solo USB interface. It's a two in, two out interface. That means it has two audio inputs and two audio outputs, so a stereo output. So it's got uh, one microphone input with phantom power. It's got an instrument level input where you can plug your guitar directly in. You can also switch this to line level. There is a monitor control to control the volume and a headphone port to plug in your headphones. Also on the back, there's two line outputs where you can connect a pair of speakers. Your audio interface is also your converter that converts analog signals to digital signals. So an analog signal is something like the signal coming out of your microphone. It also converts digital signals coming from your DAW back into analog so you can hear them through your headphones. Audio interfaces also come in a wide variety of inputs, outputs, and prices. Also included is the Scarlett CM25 Large Diaphragm Condenser Mic. This can be plugged directly into the mic input on your audio interface to record into your DAW. Also included are the Scarlett HP60 over-ear headphones. The kit also includes a mic clip and a 10-foot microphone cable. So there's a couple things that were not included in the package that you definitely wanna get. The first is a mic stand. You don't ever wanna hold on to a mic and record for studio recordings, especially a condenser mic. They have really sensitive self noise and you'll hear your hand on the mic while you're recording. So definitely get a mic stand. Second, get yourself a pop filter. The pop filter helps with plosives in the recording. A plosive is essentially just a low end buildup, uh, like a pop sound in the recording on usually P's and sometimes B's. So you definitely wanna get a pop filter that'll prevent those plosives in your recording. Another optional thing you may wanna get is a MIDI keyboard controller like this. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and price points. This one's a Novation Impulse 49, so it's a 49 key controller. Having a MIDI controller will allow you to type in your notes 
and play in your, record, your MIDI recordings with your hands as opposed to having to type them in with the mouse. So if you're getting into electronic music or beat building or anything like that, you wanna get a MIDI controller. So next I'll show you how to set up your audio interface with your laptop. So I'm using a 2018 MacBook Pro. It only has USB-C inputs on it. It doesn't have USB-A. So I've got a USB-A to USB-C adapter here. So I'm just gonna plug in my audio interface that way. The Scarlett Solo is completely USB powered, so there's no external power. It's all uh, drawn from the computer. And the next thing I like to do is, I like to, on a Mac at least, I like to check my system preferences. So I go up to Apple, go down to System Preferences. From here, I click here to show all of my system prefs. I go over to Sound, and there's two tabs here the Output tab. I want to make sure this is set to Scarlett Solo USB and then the input is also set to the Scarlett. So this means that the Mac is going to be sending audio to the Scarlett and also receiving audio from the Scarlett. Next, you can open up your DAW. So I'm gonna open up Logic here and I'll create a new project. I'll just create an empty audio track, that's totally fine. In Logic, you go up to Logic Pro 10, Preferences, then go over to Audio, and here you wanna set your input and output device to the Scarlett Solo USB. So this means that Logic is going to be communicating with the Scarlett Solo as its main input device and its main output device. So this means that all incoming audio, like a microphone or a guitar cable, all of that can be recorded as audio on tracks in Logic. And this also means that all outgoing audio coming from Logic will be played back through the Scarlett Solo. So you won't hear audio play back through your laptop speakers anymore. You'll just hear it come through the Scarlett. So you'll have to hook up headphones or hook up studio monitors to hear back audio. Before I close out Logic's audio preferences, I wanna talk about this IO buffer size option because it's very important when it comes to recording audio. Pretty much all DAWs will have this. Sometimes it's called block size, sometimes it's called buffer size. This has to do with how large the blocks of information are that the processor processes. So if you choose a small block size, it's rapidly processing small chunks of digital information. If you choose a higher buffer size, it's more slowly processing large chunks of information. So this is pretty important for recording because if you set this to a high buffer like 1024 here, you'll end up with a lot of latency in your recording, meaning that when you sing or play into the mic, you, what you actually hear in the headphones will be a few milliseconds or several milliseconds actually behind what you're singing or playing. So it becomes sort of like a lag in the recording. You don't want that latency when recording. So for all recording purposes, you wanna set this to a lower value like 64 or 32 samples. You'll see here at 32 samples, we're only getting 6.8 milliseconds of round trip latency. That's not something that your ear is really going to notice, but something like 50 milliseconds of latency, you're gonna notice that. So why would you ever want to use a high buffer size like 1024, especially when you get 51.8 milliseconds of round trip latency? With larger block sizes or larger buffer sizes, this allows your DAW to process more plugins and effects simultaneously. If you try to run a full mix with a lot of effects uh, at a lower buffer size, what's gonna happen is your DAW is gonna crash or you're gonna get a playback error. So when you're editing and mixing and just working on your project, keep the buffer size high, but when you're tracking and recording, keep the buffer size low. So I'm gonna set this to 32 samples and then I'll just click apply changes, close out that window, and we're ready to record. Next, let's check and make sure we're getting sound from our headphones. So in Logic, I'll just go over to the loop library and I'm gonna pull in a drum loop here. I'll just pull this one in here. And I'll zoom in on my track by clicking and dragging down. In Logic, you can zoom horizontally by pressing command left and right. And you can set your playhead back to the beginning by pressing return. And let's just press play and see if we get sound. Let's put that on a loop. Now, if you're not getting sound, you may wanna check the monitor level on the focus ray. If this is all the way down, you're not gonna hear anything. So you wanna pull this up and make sure that you're getting signal. Next, let's set up our microphone. So in Logic, 
I'll just create an audio track. I'll make sure that this track is a mono audio track by clicking here, because it's only one channel. And what you're gonna do is make sure that the input on this track is set to input one. Now our audio interface only has two channels, input one or input two. And on the Scarlet Solo, input one is the mic input, input two is the instrument input. So I'll just choose input one here. And there's two things we're gonna do. We're gonna click the I button here. This input monitors the track. So we should be able to hear audio right now, but we're not getting anything. Let's turn that off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the phantom power on the audio interface. Condenser microphones require phantom power. It's a 48 volt signal that runs up the microphone cable and powers the capsule inside the mic. So I'm gonna turn that on. Make sure that the mic preamp gain is pulled up a little bit. And then I'm gonna input monitor, and there we go. You can hear my voice uh, through the DAW. I'm hearing myself in my headphones as well. So let's make our first recording. We have to properly set our preamp gain levels first. So again, remember with condenser mics like the Scarlett CM25, this requires phantom power. The Scarlett Solo makes setting levels really easy. If you see a steady green light, your level is good. If it's orange, you're almost clipping. And in the red, you're definitely clipping. So if you see an orange or red light, hold down the gain a bit. In Logic, I'll just create a single audio track, click the input monitor and arm for recording buttons on the track header, and I'll make sure that the musician can hear herself through the headphones well enough. And then just press R to record. If you prefer to sing and play at the same time, you can actually do this with a single carefully placed condenser mic. We'll talk about overdubbing multiple tracks in a future video. There must be some kind of way out of here. Said the joke to the thief. There's too much confusion. I can't get no relief. Businessmen, they, they drink my wine Now men dig my earth None of them I'm along the line Know what any of it is worth Alright, so that's just an introduction to the gear you'll need to get started and how to set up and start making your first recordings. In the next video, we'll talk about the different types of microphones and miking techniques. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. You can also check me out on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and if you'd like to make a monthly contribution to the channel, you can check me out on Patreon as well. That would be greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget the discount code musictechhelpguy at photosavings.com. You'll get 10% off your order. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.